so before I get into my slides, maybe a little bit of background on me and why you might want to listen to some of the things that I say. I was one of the co-founders of a company called Diaku. We were a startup in the data governance space. We made a software product called Axon, uh, and that product was purchased by Informatica in 2017, beginning of this year. So what you're seeing is uh, the experience that we had as a startup being disruptors in the space of data governance, because as we keep talking about, the small company we are agile, we are nimble, we're able to do exciting things. But we've also got the experience now of Informatica with a 7,000 plus uh, global enterprise client base doing information management, including data governance. And what we get from that is the knowledge that Informatica has, but also the knowledge of what our customers are doing in the space, both the innovators like Tesla and also um, the established businesses like uh, Nissan. And Nissan actually make 50% more electric cars per year than Tesla do. They're also an innovator in their own right. So what we're talking about here is our experiences from the startup perspective, from the uh, established leading uh, company when it comes to uh, data management, and also from the experience of the best of breed from our 7,500 customers. So the first thing is a little bit on how the, the landscape has changed around data. So it used to be, in the very early days, data was just used for specific applications. And then that's changed over time, and it's become that data is used in a more enterprise-wide capacity. And then we're seeing now this generational market shift where we're looking at data for analytics, for machine learning, to power digital transformation. And what we see is that data governance has to mature with this change. Data governance originated from people in the technology space needing to understand data better so that they could connect systems together. Over time, that's become far more business-oriented, with the business wanting to understand the data that it has and how we use that information. And now, we want to be able to connect and drive insight and collaborate with that data. So we're seeing an acceleration here, but it also means that data governance has to change. So if we think about what digital transformation is, what we're trying to enable, we talked quite a lot about this this morning, so I'm going to go through it fairly quickly. New business models, new organizational processes, new users and consumers of the data, new applications uh, for that data, new infrastructure to help facilitate the provision, distribution, and anal analytics for that data, and new regulations to help us control and govern this burgeoning flow of information. Data is at the bottom, at the foundation of all of this. You can't do digital transformation without data. And so what does that mean? We need intelligent data governance to be able to sit on top of this to support our transformation efforts. If we don't know what we have and what we want to use it for, then uh, uh, we're, we're not, we're not going to win in this game. So, <clears throat> actually, I'm going to go, go, go back one. Uh, a, a question. In this room, hands up if you work for a startup. No one. Hands up if you work for an established business that is one of the market leaders in their, in their space. Right? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much everybody. Right. So, so I think what was really interesting about the, 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 the stuff we had this morning is we're talking about disruption. But uh, it actually translates to there are a bunch of people who are smaller and dynamic, who are well-funded, who are going to try and eat your lunch. Okay? That's the reality of, of, of the morning. What I'm here to tell you is that actually we're in a really strong position here because we have market share. We've got a lot of data and a lot of knowledge, and we have a lot of people. And those people know things. And whilst we talk about the AI space, we were talking about narrow AI, which is our ability to connect and understand these things, and gradually moving on into more mature things. But right now, we have natural intelligence. We've got the intelligence of the people that we have. So a lot of what we're going to talk about is how we enable the collaboration of people as well. They're a very strong asset for all of our companies. So a little bit on the trends uh, of DG. Data, we want to treat it as a strategic asset. And whether you want to monetize that data or whether you want to use it to drive new 
um, business models. Uh, everybody's starting to see that data is a, an important piece of uh, a value proposition. New data consumers, internally and externally. Increase in data-centric regulations and a growing volume and type of data. So these are the things that we have to support as a business. And what we're talking about over the next few slides, these are some of our clients that are looking in this space, that are working and doing dynamic and innovative things. Uh, and one of the key things here is about speed. How fast can we do data governance? How can we uh, embed data governance within the organization and do things in a way that doesn't require the slow, burning, suffering strain of growing out a data governance program that I'm sure we've all experienced as we've tried to sh shoulder it forward. So let's talk about intelligent data governance. Another couple of questions for you. Hands up if you think you have enough resources for your data governance objectives. One. OK, uh, that's one more than I was expecting. Uh, and how many people think that enterprise-wide, they are culturally ready for the change that comes with implementing data governance? One, also one more than I was expecting. So what we can see is that if we said we want to apply a traditional model for data governance across the enterprise, we're going to struggle from two key areas. One, we don't have the mind share. People aren't going to do it. And two, we couldn't do it if we wanted to because we don't have enough bodies to do the work. Who thinks they can do it at the same speed as the organization needs it? OK, and even the ones are now zeros, right? <laughs> so nobody thinks we can move fast enough. And that means we need to change the approach. So here's what we're going to try and do. We want to focus on collaboration across stakeholders so that we can collect the, the knowledge and the work that's already being done in our business. We want to connect the different kinds of effort that are being done, so connect policy with technical and operational efforts. We want to give people the opportunity to act with confidence and authority based upon the information that we provide them. And we want to empower the community to monitor our performance around data locally for our own purposes and see that we're doing that right within the context of the business. And we want to give access to everybody so that everybody's got access to the data that they want. Now, <clears throat> if we translate that, we can also talk about what analytics is for, what AI is for, what transformation is for, and being a digital business. It's about insight. It's about seeing things that other people don't see. And we do that by making connections that other people can't. And so what we're talking about here with a, a new approach to data governance is not just connecting the information together, but connecting the people together, connecting the functions and disciplines, and connecting from the technical up to the business layer and back down again so that what we can do as a business is make those connections quickly to provide the collaboration in place and let the solutions present themselves. They become as obvious as the problems if we have the knowledge to be able to take those actions. So you'll see we're talking a lot less about uh, a formalized, established pattern of governance roles and responsibilities. They're an essential function, but you're not going to be able to apply them everywhere. What you can do is start to make connections, link people with subject matter expertise, build a corporate memory and knowledge around data and its use that lets you make smart decisions and lets you bring together the right people in the room to get to your answers. So when we're looking at that, we're talking about data governance for the masses, from the people uh, in the data governance office who are going to help us define our standards. Then gradually through to the users of our data, the people that help them manage things on a day-to-day -day basis, the owners to whom they can raise questions and challenges, and then through to the more technical side of things, where we have people who are responsible either as custodians or to design the infrastructure about how we move data along. And so, again, we think all of these are critical stakeholders, because if you want to do enterprise data governance in the next 24 months, you've got to be able to leverage all the people that you have and be, use all of the strengths that they have uh, to get a connected view from uh, top to bottom. 
And so one of the things that's been kind of personally exciting for me is that uh, when you'll see we have a little orange box there that says data governance. And as a, a startup company, that's what, that's what we built, something that was uh, that modern approach about enabling the business and collaboration. But there's this huge wealth of information that exists and understanding about how data moves and what it's used for. And Informatica has a huge amount of experience in here. And I'm sure that whether you're using Informatica or not, uh, you'll be able to see um, a kind of an analog to the, to the products that you have and the way that you're managing and controlling your data. But the wonderful thing here is that when we talk about connections and relationships, when we became part of the Informatica family, we can take down from connectivity into the organization. We can roll that up into supporting uh, the movement of data to support the understanding of metadata and the examination of quality, and then use that to feed into the key solutions that you need as an enterprise to become digital. So governance is not just about connecting people and connecting understanding. It's also about being able to use all of that wonderful spend that we've made on data to bring that to the surface and present that to those audience for that decision making. So when we talk about you know, our metadata and our governance, what is it that we're trying to, trying to collect? What is it that's important? Well, we've, we've got it in, um, in four categories here. We have the technical metadata. So going out and finding the, what are the assets that we have? Where are they stored? How does it flow? Then translating that into business. What are we doing with that? Where's the value of that information for us? What are we using it for today? And what can we use it for tomorrow? If we're doing changes in the space, what are the improvements that we're making? We have usage. Uh, what, is, what is popular if we're buying data sets, if we're selling data sets, who's using them and for what, and what's the value of, uh, of that data to our organization? And then the operational metrics about you know, last accessed and what's popular and what's not, and the security controls and all that kind of stuff that we have around our data. So we want to be able to unify that picture because that's what gives us control over our landscape. So it's also important when we talk about relationships and connectivity, that we're able to access information from a broad variety of sources. And we need to not just be able to access the data, but we need to understand the metadata around it. So as part of our uh, unified intelligence uh, platform, we have the ability to scan and collect information from a wide range of resources. And you'll see that there's a common theme here, whether we're talking about getting all of the people in your organization that have knowledge and collating that, whether we're talking about collating the information that exists from your technical sources and pulling that together, or whether it's about enabling the understanding of how the various parties work together to achieve an outcome. That's what new data governance is. It's about making those connections and developing that enterprise insight. So some interesting things that we're doing in the space. We're, we're, we talk about AI, and I guess this would fit into the narrow AI band, at least in the, uh, in the uh, current stages. We're doing AI-assisted cataloging. One of the biggest challenges that uh, I'm sure you'd agree that we see in the data governance space is populating the catalog, keeping our catalog up to date and maintained. It's one thing to talk about insight and value and collaboration, but there's a, uh, an overhead involved in keeping that knowledge up to date. So we're doing some pretty creative work in taking technical views, mapping those to our business views, and being able to, to keep those moving over time. And this is an important piece of uh, automation of knowledge gathering and collecting insight. It's important that we're able to present our views in ways that all of our various stakeholders understand. We were talking to the analyst community recently, and one of the things that they gave us, they said, how do you support these roles? And they were talking about a chief privacy officer, they were talking about risk, they were talking about uh, finance, they were talking about the C-suite, not just a CDO, and they're talking about architects and stewards and other things, a very, very broad spectrum of users. And we can't expect those users to understand 
the details around data management. They want kind of the iPhone version of the enterprise and of our knowledge base. So what we need to do is present them with a view of the organization that makes sense to them. And so when we talk about lineage, it's a pretty overused term. We're talking about the connections between objects. And so one of the things that is important for any data governance program is to be able to tell the lineage story from the perspective of a business, the business view of applications, the business view of names, the business view of processes, etc. And then be able to also, for a technical audience, translate that stuff down. When we're looking at issue resolution, when we're looking at challenges that we want to solve, when we're looking at uh, the valid validation of sources, quality, all of those things eventually you're going to get down into the physical space. So something that gives you a seamless transition between the two. And data governance, often we hear anecdotal things. My data is crap. Right? OK, how? It doesn't support my preconceived notion about the thing that I want to do, so I don't like my dashboard. Your dashboard's different from mine. I'm upset about it. And so any data governance program is going to mature fairly quickly to the point where you need hard answers for things. So we can see the business flow, we can see a technical flow, we've engaged with a broad community of people, but we're going to have, we need to start looking at quality. So one of the key things that a governance program's got to be able to do is say, this is what good looks like for me. This is what it enables for me. Here is the cost of quality so that there's a business driver to improve that so that it can get actually resolved and we can start moving things forward. <clears throat> and then to be able to turn policy into something that's executable and that we can move forward with. A lot of the time we, we document policy, but we find it hard to execute policy and we find it hard to report on policy. So this is a, again, it's, it's a view of being able to take something from top to bottom across the piece, engage with our stakeholders, and I've got some stuff around GDPR, and I, I don't really want to dwell on this. But what we know is that actually the scope of data for GDPR is pretty wide. Um, and in fact, something that's a bit different about GDPR compared to some of the other regulations, if we look at um, how many people here work for someone that is uh, bound by the BCBS 239 regulation? OK, so a few of you. So in, in the banking space, BCBS 239, it's about risk data aggregation. Um, and to summarize it, to grossly oversimplify, it basically said, if you're going to be making risk decisions on your data, you should know where it comes from, what you've done with it in order to get it in this place and standardize it so that you understand the additional risk that you're taking uh, because of the relative quality of the data that's, that you're providing in your reports. So that was really about understanding and flow. With GDPR, what we're actually seeing is the full life cycle of data. So in addition to um, the opportunity that gets presented for having a full 360 view of our customer, what we're also seeing is that we need to understand security and sensitivity of data. We need to actually do consent and mastering, and we need to be able to purge data. So we've got to do full life cycle management in addition to the understanding and the flow and the distribution and the collaboration. So regulations are maturing, and they are coming to the point where they're not just asking us for data governance, they're asking for full information management and a demonstration of that capability across, uh, through the lens of uh, our data governance. So I guess I'm going to spend a couple of minutes on this, and uh, just bear with me while I expose all of this. If we're talking about what a modern approach to data governance looks like, we tend to start normally somewhere in kind of the middle with, a, uh, with our siloed, high-touch data governance programs. But if we're looking at where we want to get to, what we're really saying is we want broad enterprise coverage. We want to see what data we have. We want to see who's responsible for it. We want to kind of get a footprint going very, very fast. 
And so here we call that um, our discover. It's not just about discovering the, the underlying data, it's just about discovering uh, use. It's about discovering gaps in our knowledge. It's about discovering how the organization uses things. So but that, you can do that without a huge amount of cultural change. As long as people are willing to help share information, as long as we can federate out contribution, understanding should be something that is an achievable target with discovery tools as well as with contribution from our stakeholders. Once we've gotten to that point, we'll start to see uh, connections. It will become immediately apparent where we have gaps, where we have uh, miscommunications. And we can start to challenge things. And we, we give that information to our population. And they can say, well, actually, I want to change this. I need to understand this better. We have a central place to start bringing those challenges. And that's also, it's our key markers for where we want to apply data governance. I need help here. I need stronger roles. Uh, I have problems that I want to solve. I need data quality measurement here because anecdotally we're hearing there are problems in this space. So in that, that area, once we've got a decent footprint, we can start to work together and the roles will grow. So Nicola's going to give you a wonderful talk in a second about the framework for governance. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> And those, in that framework, you can start to build into that framework from here where you need it and at the level of uh, detail and control that you need it. And that's important for an adoption perspective as well. You'll do the right amount of data governance. Then we get into the collaboration. Once we've got these roles and responsibilities in place, once we uh, have the ability to understand who's impacted by things, people will start to volunteer. They become part of the way that we do business. Uh, when we run a project, we'll see what we can pick up. We'll see what the impacts are going to be because we've got a better understanding of things. And so then we can start really establishing shared definitions and standards, ones that we've collectively contributed to rather than been defined in a small room and then thrown against the organization. And then that means we can start to do pretty cool things. We've helped solve, we're helping to solve some of the problems. We also have pretty good visibility of the organization. It means protection becomes easier. And it's not just regulatory protection. Uh, another show of hands. How many people can think of an example where they implemented a new system and then they had to keep the old one because the new one didn't do everything the old one what did? Or uh, we had unknown interfaces that we suddenly realized it was supplying other systems and we couldn't switch it off. Yeah, exactly, right? So, everybody. And, and the reason for that is, uh, oh, hands up if you think that the people who run the projects in your organization are stupid. <laughs> a, couple, a couple of healthy dissenters, I like it. How many of you think that they didn't have the right information to make the right choices when they were doing that implementation? That's our job, okay? If we can give them the right information, people will do the right things. So it's our fault. <laughs> <laughs> and then once we're doing that, if we're doing good things, if you think for, for a dynamic project, I don't have five years to do a new program, I've got one. Knowledge discovery, that gets squeezed. If we do knowledge discovery, if we know it already, if we have access to the right people, if we know the impact of things, if we've got this filterable, malleable view of how data is used by the organization, we can be fast. We don't need to worry about startups because then they're, they're what? They're slightly less well-funded. They have missing all of the data, which we've seen is a huge asset for us. They don't have the people with all of the embedded industry expertise that we have, and they don't have the client base. So once we get up to the top there, we become adaptable. We can do projects right. We can get rid of the 60-year-old system, mainframe system that they're still running, but they're, that they're terrified to touch today because we can understand what it does and what's going to go bang if we switch it off. And that means that at the end of that day, we can leverage that asset. So this slide, and I know we spent a few minutes on it, this is about the, the journey, the story of becoming a digital company. 
It's about practical steps we can do today that put in a footprint based upon the organization and its current state, because you've got to start changing it now. You can't wait for it to change. And it's about taking it through a journey that shows value, that shows the assessment and the understanding of what needs to change, that supports the move to a transformation, and gets us to a place where we're treating data as an asset. This is the journey of data governance, and you can start doing it today. <laughs>